Hello, geometry scholars. Good to see you again. This is still chapter 10 in Big Ideas. We're on lesson six. So far, uh, we've talked about all kinds of other uh, tangents and things. We're going to use segments this time, segments of chords, tangents, and secants. We have three theorems and four examples. The vocabulary for this section, as you can see, is segments of a chord, tangent segment, secant segment, and external segment. Let's go. So when two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, each chord is divided into two segments that are called segments of the chord. Here you can see we have a theorem. If two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the product of the lengths of the segment of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the segments of the other chord. So you can see here our chords are A, B, and C, D. And where they intersect at E cuts them both into two parts. So A, E, or E, A, times the length of E, B is equal to C, E times D, E. And that is theorem 10.18. So we're going to go ahead and do an example using that theorem. Find L and, and J, and J, and J, and J. And Solution. Solution. The segment of chords theorem stands if two chords intersect in the interior of the circle, then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the segments of the other chord. So using the segments of chords theorem, NK times NJ is equal to NL times NM. Substitute X for NK, X plus 4 for NJ, X plus 1 for NL, and X plus 2 for NM. This gives you X times the quantity X plus 4 equals the quantity X plus 1 times the quantity X plus 2. Simplify. And X squared plus 4X is equal to X squared plus 3X plus 2. Subtract X squared from each side of the equation. And 4X is equal to 3X plus 2. Subtract 3X from each side of the equation. And X is equal to 2. Now find ML and JK by substitution. Notice ML is equal to NM plus NL. So ML is equal to the quantity X plus 2 plus the quantity X plus 1. Substituting 2 for X gives ML is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, which equals 7. Now find JK. Notice JK is equal to NK plus NJ. So JK is equal to X plus the quantity X plus 4. Substituting 2 for X gives JK is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 4, which equals 8. So ML equals 7 and JK equals 8. But in a perfect world, the drawing is accurate and you'll notice that JK looks closer to the center and ML looks closer to the edge, which is which makes sense. So these uh, that that would be a little bit shorter. So these are examples we do in class together. We're going to move on to the next core concept. Tangent segment and secant segment. So you see the labeling here. Again, color coding would really help. So a tangent segment is a segment that is tangent to a circle at an end point. That would be the blue part here. So it's tangent at S. A secant segment is a segment that contains a chord of a circle and has exactly one end point outside the circle. The part of a secant segment that is outside the circle is called an external segment. So P is outside of the circle, QR is inside of the circle. So if you have a secant, the inside is called the secant segment, the outside is called the external segment. We also have another theorem about how to treat two, two secants, 10.19. If two secant segments share the same endpoint outside a circle, in this case it's point E, then the product of the lengths of one secant segment and its external segment equals the product of the lengths of the other secant segment and its external segment. So as you'll notice, EA is the external segment here, and then EB is all of it. Okay, 
it's also equal to EC times ED, which is all of it. Again, there's an example 20 that you can see for proof, but we'll just go ahead and use it for now. These are our short videos, and here's one of the ways to use it. Example two. Find the value of X. Solution. Notice segments RQ and RT are secants. The segments of secant theorem states if two secant segments share the same endpoint outside a circle, then the product of the lengths of one secant segment and its external segment equals the product of the lengths of the other secant segment and its external segment. So by the segments of secant theorem, RP times RQ is equal to RS times RT. Substitute 9 for RP, 11 plus 9 for RQ, 10 for RS, and X plus 10 for RT. This gives you 9 times the quantity 11 plus 9 is equal to 10 times the quantity X plus 10. Simplify, and 180 is equal to 10X plus 100. Subtract 100 from each side of the equation, and 80 is equal to 10X. Divide each side of the equation by 10, and 8 is equal to X. So the value of X is 8. It's a fairly straightforward theorem, but you do have to remember which parts you're multiplying. We've got um, some more examples here that we'll do together in class, and we've got one more theorem. Theorem 10.20 segments of secants and tangents. So this is another way that the, the picture can look. If you have this picture, if a secant segment and a tangent segment share an endpoint outside a circle, in this case E, then the product of the lengths of the secant segment and its external seg segment equals the square of the length of the tangent segment. So in the last one, it was the external segment times the whole thing well, if you only have a tangent, then it's the tangent times itself. So EA times EA equals EC times ED. Very similar to the last one. We'll show you how it works. Here's an example three. Find RS. Solution. Notice segment RQ is a tangent segment and segment RT is a secant segment that meet at point R outside of the circle. The segments of secants and tangents theorem states if a secant segment and a tangent segment share an endpoint outside a circle, then the product of the lengths of the secant segment and its external segment equals the square of the length of the tangent segment. So, by the segments of secants and tangents theorem, RQ squared is equal to RS times RT. Substitute 16 for RQ, X for RS, and x plus 8 for rt. This gives you 16 squared is equal to x times the quantity x plus 8. Simplify, and 256 is equal to x squared plus 8x. Write in standard form, and 0 is equal to x squared plus 8x minus 256. To solve for x, use the quadratic formula, and x is equal to the quantity negative 8 plus or minus the square root of the quantity 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 256, all divided by the quantity 2 times 1. Simplify, and x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 17. Use the positive solution because lengths cannot be negative. So x is equal to negative 4 plus 4 times the square root of 17, which is approximately equal to 12 and 49 hundredths. And rs is approximately equal to 12 and 49 hundredths. Another way you can solve is by using proportions. In this example, you can draw segments qs and qt as shown. Because angle rqs and angle rtq intercept the same arc, they are congruent. By the reflexive property of congruence, angle QRS is congruent to angle TRQ. So triangle RSQ is similar to triangle RQT by the angle-angle similarity theorem. You can then use this fact to write and solve a proportion to find X. It seems easier to me to just use the, uh, use the theorem straight on and the quadratic formula, but it's always good to know another way. 
We have one more example. It's going to be finding uh, the radius of a circle. Find the radius of the aquarium tank. Solution. Notice segment CB is a tangent segment and segment CD is a secant segment that meet at point C outside of the circle. Using the segments of secants and tangents theorem, CB squared is equal to CE times CD. Substitute 20 for CB, 8 for CE, and 2R plus 8 for CD. And this gives you 20 squared is equal to 8 times the quantity 2R plus 8. Simplify. And 400 is equal to 16R plus 64. Subtract 64 from each side of the equation, and 336 is equal to 16R. Divide each side of the equation by 16, and 21 is equal to R. So the radius of the tank is 21 feet. Again, very straightforward. I hope that that is... Um, if you don't get it, again, rewatch it. Stop the video, go back a few minutes and we are ready to go ahead and do our practice for C10L6.